Isaiah chapter 18. Ah, the land of whirling wings that is beyond the rivers of, the, of Cush, which sends ambassadors by the sea in vessels of papyrus on the waters. Go, you swift messengers, to a nation tall and smooth, to a people feared near and far, a nation mighty and conquering, whose land the rivers divide. All you inhabitants of the world, you who dwell on the earth, when a signal is raised on the mountains, look, when a trumpet is blown, hear. For thus the Lord said to me, I will quietly look from my dwelling, like clear heat in sunshine, like a cloud of dew in the heat of harvest. For before the harvest, when the blossom is over, and the flower becomes a ripening grape. He cuts off the shoots with pruning hooks, and the spreading branches he lops off and clears away. They shall all of them be left to the birds of the prey of the mountains, and to the beasts of the earth. And the birds of the prey will uh, summer on them, and all the beasts of the earth will winter on them. At that time tribute will be brought to the Lord of hosts, from a people tall and smooth, from a people feared near and far, a nation mighty and conquering, whose land the rivers divide to Mount Zion, the place of the name of the Lord of hosts. Uh, well, this um, uh, uh, chapter uh, concerns uh, the nation of Kush, uh, uh, our modern-day Ethiopia, uh, Sudan, and Somalia. And at that time, it's part of the Egyptian dynasty. So uh, this chapter kind of really does flow into uh, chapter 19. And uh, this chapter, though, is, is transitional. Uh, you'll notice that there is no an oracle concerning. Uh, it starts with ah uh, or woe. And uh, we saw that in uh, chapter 17, verse uh, 12. So it's a little bit transitional. Uh, the background to this chapter is uh, Egypt organizing a conspiracy against the superpower Assyria and sending envoys or diplomats to secure the supports, uh, support of the nation. So uh, sending uh, particularly uh, Kushite messengers uh, to uh, secure um, the support of uh, different nations so that they could rebel against Assyria. And the message of this chapter, which is consistent with the rest of the book, is that Judah is not to take place in any kind of international conspiracy, but is to trust in the Lord. Uh, Alec Matir uh, it's written a very helpful commentary on Isaiah. It's more technical than uh, Barry Webb's one, but it's very helpful. And uh, he, he says at this point, the world knows no security but collective strength. And that's true. But Judah was to be different. Uh, her security was to be in God. Uh, so verses 1 to 2 open with the idea of uh, Cush sending ambassadors to the world um, uh, by the sea, in vessels of papyrus on, on the waters, this idea of the, the Kushites going out to the world. Uh, but then uh, halfway through verse uh, 2, it talks, it says, Go, you swift messengers, uh, to a nation tall and smooth, to a people feared near and far, a, a nation mighty and conquering, whose land the rivers divide. And, and that just, it, it's um, a little bit tricky to work that out. And again, you can check the commentaries and you'll see they'll discuss it. Uh, because... Uh, it's like Cush sends messengers and then uh, halfway through it says, go you messengers to a nation. And then it seems to be describing the nation of Cush, uh, tall people, smooth skin, feared uh, around the world. Uh, so what's going on? Well, I think uh, halfway through verse two, it's, it's like the Lord is saying, okay, you Cushites, you, you send messengers all around the world, but I'm going to send messengers to you. Uh, I'm going to send messengers uh, to you. And the message that I am going to uh, say is uh, a message that's actually for the whole uh, world. Verse 3. Listen, uh, all you inhabitants of the world, uh, uh, you who dwell on the earth. So my message for you, Cush, uh, is my message for the whole world. When a signal is raised on the mountains, look, when a banner, when a trumpet is uh, sounded, uh, blown here, Okay. When war is about to happen, listen, this is what I'm going to do, verse 4. This is what the Lord is going to do. I will quietly look from my dwelling, like a clear heat in sunshine, like a cloud of dew in the heat of harvest. I'm going to do nothing. I am not going to uh, intervene. Uh, God will not be involved until, and then verse 5, you get this idea of when... Um, uh, before, the, when, uh, before the harvest, when the blossom is over, when this kind of war has come almost to an end, then God will cut off the shoots and pruning hooks 
uh, he will he will uh, prune he will intervene uh, the war will have destroyed but God will in a sense uh, finish off God will act in judgment that idea of pruning in, in the Bible is, is tied uh, to uh, judgment and so verse 6 uh, there will the, the, the nations will be uh, devastated and so the point is uh, it's really a message for uh, Judah Okay, Judah, what's the point in uh, joining with uh, Cush against Assyria? Because I'm going to destroy both. I'm not going to intervene when the war happens, but I'm going to bring both uh, to their destruction. But, but more than that, uh, there is a note of hope at the end. Verse 7, at that time. Again, uh, what we've got in these chapters is this sort of... Uh, telescoping you know there'll be the immediate event uh, in Isaiah's day but then there'll be the event at, at the end and, th and this I think is an end time uh, description at that time from a people tall and smooth again we're talking about the Cushites from a people feared near and far a nation mighty and conquering whose land the rivers divide to Mount Zion they will come and they will bring tribute to the place of the name of uh, the Lord of hosts so Cush uh, comes to Judah and says, join in our conspiracy against Assyria. And the message of the Lord is, no, don't do that. Wait for the day when people from Cush will come again to Zion. But this time not to uh, call on you to join in their conspiracy. No, they will bring tribute and they will worship uh, the Lord. So again, uh, very um, uh, similar to uh, the, the chapters that we have seen. It, it's a call for uh, God's people to trust in the Lord, not to trust in uh, the nations around them. And uh, it's a message uh, for us as Christian people who believe in the Lord Jesus. Um, I've been thinking about the beginning of uh, 1 Corinthians and uh, the wisdom of the world and the wisdom of the cross. And actually 1 Corinthians makes all these kind of connections back to Isaiah. And uh, it seems to be the temptation that God's people always have is we want to embrace the wisdom of the world. And at this time, the wisdom of the world might, be, might, might have looked like international diplomacy. Uh, now, uh, none of us, I imagine, will be engaged in international diplomacy. And in any case, uh, the application would be slightly different uh, because we're not the nation of Judah. Um, but as Christian people, the tendency uh, of our hearts is the same as the tendency of, of Judah. It is to look to the world for our security. Uh, but God says the world will be destroyed. And in fact, the nations of the world will come and bring tribute to uh, the Lord Jesus when he is established on Mount Zion. So why not, why line up with the world who are going to be defeated and who are going to be humbled and trust in the Lord? Why not just, uh, in a sense, cut out all that middle stuff and get to the end and trust in the Lord? Uh, so the message for us is to keep trusting in uh, the Lord. Uh, let's pray. Our oh, Father, we thank you for this uh, vision of the end uh, when the people of Cush, as in fact people from all nations, uh, will bow the knee and give glory to the Lord Jesus. Please help us to live in the light of the end, not to uh, fall in love with the world's wisdom, uh, but to give ourselves uh, to you in trust and to take refuge in you. And uh, we ask this in Jesus' name for your glory.